What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp Dynamic Components tutorial for you. So last week we kicked off a series on Dynamic Components and I talked through the basics. So in today's video we're going to create a practical example by creating a dynamic shelf in SketchUp. Uh, today's video is brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials course. The SketchUp Essentials course is my course that I created to give you a start to finish training in SketchUp. So it's got over 14 hours of instruction as well as we have a community forum where you can come to get your questions answered and we get together every two weeks on live calls to talk about SketchUp. So if you have any questions you can ask them there as well. So if that's something you're interested in, you want to come hang out with me on some live calls or just check out the SketchUp training library. Make sure you check that out at the SketchUp essentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so what we want to do in this situation, let's create something simple like a shelf. And so if you think about a shelf, basically it's made up of a couple different components, right? It's made up of a couple sides as well as a top and then however many shelves you have um, down below. There may be some trim pieces and stuff, but we're going to keep this really simple for right now. We may add a back as well. But what we want to do is we want to start by modeling those out. And I'm just going to create a very simple shelf. So maybe something that's like 24 inches long. And we'll say that it's going to be, we'll call it four feet high. So I'm just drawing a rectangle that's going to make up a side for right now. Then I'm just going to push pull this and we're going to say this is maybe like 0.75. So three quarters of an inch thick. And so that's going to act as our side for our shelf, right? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select this whole thing, right click, and we're going to make that a component. And I'm going to go ahead and call this the left side right here. And so now what we want to do is we want to add the shelves and the top. And in this case, we're going to make those be the same thing. So let's start just by adding a shelf. So let's say this shelf is gonna be maybe like four inches off the ground. Let's start with it being maybe like, we'll say 36 inches wide for right now. So I'm just gonna draw a rectangle. That's gonna be the size that we want. All right, so we'll just delete out this extra line. We'll push pull this up, maybe 0.75 again. And then we'll just make this a component. And we're just gonna call this shelf. And I'm gonna hit the enter key. And so then we can use the move tool in copy mode to create a couple different copies of this. So for me right now, I'm gonna make a copy that goes up to the top and then type in a forward slash and a three so that now we have four copies total. So I just use the move tool in copy mode in order to do that. And then let's go ahead and let's take this side piece and let's use the move tool in copy mode to copy this over. And one thing I'm gonna do, because I don't want two left side pieces, remember I labeled these left side, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make this unique. And I'm gonna call this one right side. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six components in our model. Well, we wanna take all of those and we wanna combine them into a single component. So I'm just gonna right click in here. I'm gonna click on make component and we'll call this shelving unit. And I'm gonna hit the enter key. So now this is a component that comp contains all of those parts and pieces. Well, now what we wanna do is we wanna right click in here and we wanna go down to the dynamic components functionality and we wanna edit the component attributes. So when we do this, remember that nested components inside of an object show up down below right here. So notice how we've got our four shelves, we've got our left side, and our right side. And so if I was to double click in here and just click on this, notice how I would see just the right side right here. But now what we need to do is we need to adjust these so that our shelving width adjusts based on a width that our user gives us. And in this case, we're just gonna use drop downs. Um, so the first thing we need to do is we need to provide the user a drop down where they can enter the value. And so to do that, we're gonna go into the attribute name and we're just gonna type in a custom name. So in this case, I'm gonna type in a value of width right here. And so width is gonna be the value that our user is gonna give us for the width of our cabinet. So in this case, what we wanna do is we don't wanna set this as a value. Instead, we wanna click on this button right here for details. And we wanna set this so that our users can select options from a list. So we're just gonna click on this button right here. And then we just wanna give them some options. So in this case, let's give an option for 18 inches. We'll add an option for 24 inches. We'll add a 36 inches. 
and we'll add a 48 inches. So now we have four options that they can select from a list and we're going to click on apply. Well now if they were to right click in here in our dynamic components and click on component options, notice how they're going to have a drop down with these options in here. But notice how in addition our options aren't doing anything right now. So we have the option where they can give us the information that we need. Now what we want to do is we want to set up the math functions inside of here that are going to make our shelf adjust. And so what we want to do is we want to set the width of our shelving pieces to the value that our user selects. So in this case, we're just going to click on the drop down for shelf and we're just going to add an attribute for length on the x axis. So len x. So if we do this, what that's going to do is that's going to set the length of our object along that x axis. And so instead of having a a hard type value in here, what we want to do is we want to link this value to this value. And we can do that by doing an equals and then clicking on this cell right here. Notice what this does is this links back to this value with a variable. So instead of this being a hard type number, it's going to adjust based on what's typed in here. So if I hit the enter key now, notice how all of the shelves are adjusting to match that width that we had set. So if we go into our dynamic components and click on component options, notice how now the width is going to equal whatever we have in here from a width standpoint, right? So notice how those shelf pieces are getting wider or narrower based on what's selected. However, now we need to come in here and we need to set this up so that this piece right here adjusts along with this because it's in the wrong position when we adjust our width. And so this is part of why I made this a unique component. What we want to do, and I do want to note because these are all instances of the same component, these shelf objects, if I was to double click in here, notice how all of them got this equal shelving unit width applied to it. That's why this happened to all of them and not just one. If these weren't copies of the same component, then you would have to come in here and you'd have to do that over and over again. But what we want to do now is we want to adjust our right side so that it aligns with our shelving whenever it adjusts. And so the way that we can do that is we can come in here and we can add a position attribute. The position attribute is going to select the location of this object along the, the x, y, or z axis. Well, in this case, we want the x axis right here. And so now we've set this so that our x axis location has a value in it. But we want to do the same thing we did before, where we want to do an equals. And we want to click on the width right here. And then I'm going to hit the enter key. Well, now when we adjust this, notice how the location on the x axis is adjusting based on the location or the width of our shelf. So now this is moving along with this. But you may notice we've got a little bit of an issue because this is only moving this width, which is basically the width of this entire shelf. Well, the problem is this also has some thickness. And so what that means is that means that this needs to move over an additional three quarters of an inch to be aligned with the end of our shelf. So in order to do that, we're just going to go back into our right side and we're just going to add plus 0.75 and hit the enter key. Well, now what this is going to do is whenever we select a width, this is going to move the object that width plus an additional three quarters of an inch. So now when I do this, notice how the side of our shelf is adjusting along with the width of our shelf. We can use this in order to really quickly adjust the width of our shelving unit. And so now one other thing is remember how we talked about we might want a back on this shelf? Well, we didn't initially have a back on the shelf, but what we can do is we can add another component in here that can be the width of our shelf. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here and notice I've double clicked in here and these are still individual components. Well, I just want to draw on the back of this a shelf or a back and I just want to give it a thickness of 0.75 and then I'm going to triple click on it. I'm going to right click and I'm going to make it a component and we're going to call this the back. So now if I click on create, we have a back in here as well. 
And so one other thing we need to do though, is we need to make sure that we set the back up so that it adjusts along with the rest of our object. So all we need to do with our back is just do the same thing where we set our length on the X axis to equals width and hit the enter key. Now that back piece is going to adjust based on the width that we give this object. And so now that we know how to do this, there's a lot of interesting things we could do here. Like for example, we've got this set up where we can set the width of our shelf. Well, there's nothing saying we can't also set the depth of our shelf. So the depth, we want to make another user dropdown, right? So in this case, let's say that we give options for 12 inches, 18 inches, and 24 inches. We're going to click the apply button right here. Now, notice how we have a drop down that allows us to set those three values. Well, then all we have to do is just set these objects so that they have a length on the Y instead of the X of that value. So we would just come into our shelf and we would set our length Y. And we would say equals our depth right here. We need to do the same thing with our right side shelf. So length Y equals our depth. And we need to set our left side shelf so that it does the length Y. So we're going to do an equals, whoops, depth right here. So notice how all of those are adjusting. All we have to do now is set the back of the object so that it does the same thing that we did with our width, right? It just needs to move along with this. So for our back, all we want to do is we want to adjust our position on the Y axis. So we're going to click right here and then we're just going to do an equals and we're going to set our depth to 12. Hit the enter key. So now if we adjust our depth, notice how this is going to move along with our object. So now we've got a shelf where we can come in here and we can adjust the width and we can adjust the depth really quickly. One other thing to note is I did notice that we've got a little bit of a gap here. That's because our width isn't incorporating the side pieces on the back. So all you would do is you would just say plus 0.75 times two for your length and then hit the enter key. So that's just adding in the width of these panels. So one and then the other one right here. So now your dynamic shelf is something that you can adjust really quickly inside of SketchUp. All right, so that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what kind of dynamic components you'd like to learn to create in the future. If you are interested in going more in depth in SketchUp, make sure you check out my course at sketchupessentials.com slash course. I'd love to help you learn SketchUp more in depth. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.